Hi, I'm Dr. Gerald Evans. I'm the Medical Director of Infection Prevention and Control here at Kingston Health Sciences Centre. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about what we know about transmission of COVID-19. So as things have gone along with the pandemic, we're learning more and more all the time about transmission. And what we know is that although this virus can be transmitted person to person, uh, by and large, uh, that appears to be mostly driven by large droplet spread. And we are beginning to recognize that although uh, fomite spread by touching a contaminated surface, for instance, and then touching your face uh, may facilitate transmission, it's uh, uh, becoming less and less uh, recognized as an efficient way to actually transmit the infection. So somewhere around maybe 10% or so of infections, whereas about 90% is from large droplet spread. So that's really important as we begin to understand what sort of circumstances transmission is likely to occur in. And what we really know now is that household type contacts tend to be the ones that are most associated with ease of transmission. And why is that? It is because basically in a household, you are around someone for long periods of time. Uh, and if they're infected, that increases the likelihood that that time of exposure is going to result in uh, effective transmission to someone else. We know that the environment in a household can become very heavily contaminated in someone who may be at the early stages of infection and in fact even pre-symptomatic. And so that sort of exposure is what tends to really facilitate efficiently the transmission. Even in those circumstances though, we know that transmission within a household from an infected person to a non-infected person is perhaps only occurs about 10 to 15 percent of the time. And a lot of that is based on the things I just mentioned, which is the time of exposure and how much you, know, you are around that person and the environment's contaminated. That's very, very relevant as well because we know that long-term care facilities where transmission has been occurring and creating outbreaks really reflects that same sort of idea that that's a household. A long-term care facility is much more like your home than it is like a hospital environment. And uh, that sort of uh, similarity is what has led to the problems of lots of transmission occurring within long-term care facilities and outbreaks. We can talk a little bit about hospitals. So hospitals could potentially be a place where transmission can occur. And that's particularly obviously if there are patients being cared for within that hospital uh, who are infected. However, in some circumstances where the prevalence of infection is low in the community and the, you know, the number of patients with COVID-19 is very, very low in your hospital, we're able to maintain an environment which is not conducive to transmission. Not the least of which is our staff wear medical grade personal protective equipment and that prevents transmission. And of course, we are maintaining isolation and precautions for patients who, who have COVID-19. So, you know, that transmission we're now beginning to realize really effectively is related to a prolonged exposure uh, in a very heavily contaminated environment from someone who is in the early stages of infection or pre-symptomatic. And outside of those uh, particular parameters, actually the attack rate is much less than the sort of 10 to 15% we see in households.